I gotta take care of something. Nobody said anything in the last video, but I was using this mic. It didn't really sound too good. So I got a new one. I hope this sounds better. I really hope this sounds better. I also wanna say I appreciate the response from the last video. I plan to keep making these types of videos, but I would like to be able to make them more consistently than every two months. I did it slightly different this time. Of course, it was a different game, and uh, I guess you'll see why. The game I'm talking about is Breakout. The idea of Breakout is to use this paddle to bounce this ball to break those bricks. So it, it's like Pong, but in all honesty, a little bit more boring. I don't know why this was my favorite game as a kid, but it was. And that's why I decided to make an AI beating it. But of course, in order to beat the game, we have to code the game. So let's do that first. Let's start off with the boilerplate code and the board that will hold our main components like our ball, our paddle, and the bricks. All right, now let's see if we can display a ball on the screen. Balls on the screen, now let's add some movement. <laughs> and I guess we should add some collision logic as well so it doesn't just go flying off the screen forever. Sort of a where's Waldo? Oh! <laughs> All right, all right, let's quit while we're ahead. That was so awesome. That was awesome. Thank you. In all seriousness, that was just a beautiful accident. You can see where we create our ball, the position. The width is a random width. That is where the ball is spawned. And the velocity, that is the direction of the ball. While it is always going to be going down, it could either go down to the left or down to the right. So those two random values had to marry up perfectly where we could get that super satisfying corner hit. Not to mention that this window must be perfect size because it just keeps repeating. I let you enjoy this just a little bit longer while I code up the paddle and the movement for the paddle. In this instance, I'm going to be using the mouse for the main control, left and right, rather than the buttons because on the original game, instead of using two buttons, one for left, one for right, similar to what we could use on a keyboard, it actually had a knob, so it was a little bit more fidgety, a little bit quicker, and I think a mouse would be a more accurate representation. Now I understand this, this won't really matter when it comes to the AI playing it, but when it comes to me creating the game, I want to be as accurate as possible. Now there's a little bit of a, I would say a bug here. When you go all the way over to one side or another, the paddle goes a little bit off screen. It would go even more if we could use regular controls other than the mouse, but we need to fix that. Paddle looks good, but in order to do its job, we need to add in some collision logic so the ball will bounce off it and bounce off it in the proper direction. And while we're at it, let's make sure that it doesn't bounce off the floor and instead it goes through the floor and the ball resets. All right, that's better. Oh, wait, wait, wait a second. This, all right, I'll fix this later. This is not, I'll fix this later. Let's create the bricks now. So I'm going to make these effectively in the same fashion that I made the paddle, except I'm going to have to put it in an array list and then yada, yada, yada. Just basic stuff. Speaking of bricks, if any of y'all like bricks of co uh, coffee, I actually just started a coffee company called First Supply Coffee. We're a small business right now, but I'll leave a link down in the description below in case you want to grab a bag. I'd appreciate your support. If not, hey, thank you for watching the video. And there you have it. This is a game breakout. Let's just add in the lives. We have three lives per turn. Let's add in the score, which in all honesty, to me, it doesn't really matter. Our main goal is to eliminate all of the blocks anyway, but I am gonna be using the score as a metric in our neural net. Basically, it's just the higher the score, the better the AI is doing. So let's use that AI somehow within our neural net, whether that be repopulating with it or just moving it over from one generation to the next. And to address any of my hardcore breakout fans out there, yeah, there are a few details that I did leave out of my version of breakout. And uh, I talk about that a little bit later. But besides that little caveat, the game is done. And <laughs> I want to point something out real quick. A while ago, I tweeted out this. As I hear more and more people talk about artificial intelligence, I realize they don't know the difference between AI and an if statement. Allow me to demonstrate exactly what I was talking about. This is an if statement playing the game, not an AI. It's just an if statement saying if the ball is to the left, go left. 
If the ball is to the right, go right. It can hit the ball. It can actually play the game fairly well, but this isn't an AI. It's not learning and it is not intelligent. But with a little real AI magic, this is the result. I tried to go about this genetic algorithm in a different manner than last time. With Tetris, I built a rather simple neural network, but with very specific and, and precise heuristics. But for this game, I wrote an algorithm for the generation of evolving artificial neural networks called Neural Evolution of Augmenting Topologies, or as you may know it, NEAT. But this, this doesn't seem to be doing exactly as I need it. So let me just change some of my inputs, make sure my outputs are all good. Now let's see if we can get this to beat the game. Turns out, uh, I had to do a little bit more than I previously expected. One of which being the colors, and um, <laughs> please don't bring up the colors ever again, please. But the biggest, the biggest part of this is that I actually ended up rewriting most of the neural network. And in the process, I made a few discoveries. So I realized that it was a whole lot easier for the AI to work if the paddle was quite a bit bigger. I also took the lives down from three to one because I don't want any survivors in this. If you one life, that's all you get. And typically with these types of projects, like last video with the Tetris, I like to keep a population of 100. I feel like that's a solid amount, but this is what it looks like with a population of 100. You can see we're pretty high up there and we're not seeing much, if any, progress at all. So instead of trying to do anything more complex, I'm simply going to increase the population. This is just increasing the amount of neural nets that are playing the game. So what was a population of 100 is now 200. So my theory here is fairly straightforward. If I need a really good football wide receiver and I have a pool of 100 to choose from, well, there is a good chance that I'll find someone that fits the bill. However, if I have a pool of 200 people to choose from, that only increases my chances of having an even better player. And that's just looking at it from one perspective. With this neural network, we're also looking at the potential of crossovers. So when we have two really good players, we can basically breed them and create a really good player from their best traits. So in theory, as the generations go on and on and on, we should be able to get better and better players. If we have a bigger pool, then we have a better chance of having even better players to go off of. However, since a population of 200 doesn't seem to work, let's see about 500. As you can see, this is obviously a whole lot better than it was before, but if we fast forward 20 generations, you can see that it's still not doing what it needs to do. I'm a very impatient man, so I want to see what it's like with a population of 1,000. And I want you to notice something here. If you look at the bottom left, you'll see how many are currently alive. And what you'll see is that on that very first hit, more than 90% of the players are eliminated. This is obviously because they didn't hit the ball, but the overarching theme of this is the fact that we're not looking to have a thousand good players or even a hundred good players. All we need are one to two good players. That way, generation after generation, we can have those players get better and better and better through crossover and mutation, selection, everything that we have integrated into our neural network. Which, as I mentioned before, this is not just your regular neural network genetic algorithm. I actually went to the approach of neural evolution. So typically, when using a neural network, you, you pick a structure that may work based on empirical evidence. So in my last video, I had experience with Tetris. That's where I created the AI and I added in heuristics based on my so-called empirical evidence on understanding what is the best strategy for that game. But in this instance, what I basically said is, these are the inputs, you can go left or right, and your goal is to increase that score as high as possible. The better the score, the better you're doing, go. And with that information, it basically does something and then throws in the outputs. Right now you'll see it go left and right and left and right. Those are the outputs based on my inputs and whatever the heck it is doing in between. And with this whole experiment, I actually found something very interesting. And it's not the fact that the AI just beat the game, although that, that is a very satisfying feeling. That's not the main takeaway here. But let's take a step back to when we tried it with a population of 500. As you saw, we hit well into the 20 generations and we weren't seeing any progress whatsoever. I even ran it longer off screen and it kept on going and it never learned. However, I tried it again, and this is actually what happened. I didn't change any code. Same neural network, same game, population of 500. And as you watch, you will see that it beats it in four generations. That's it. 
And I have a few theories as to why this may be. For starters, it could very well be the algorithm itself. Now, I've had other neat algorithms and messed with them where they work a whole lot better than this. However, there is something called competing conventions. And while I don't know everything, I'm still very much a beginner in this space. I'm just trying to do as much research and understand as much as I can. Competing conventions. It is a big issue with evolving the topologies of neural networks. And it is the idea of just just blindly crossing over the genomes of two neural networks. So when you pick two parents and you create a child, that could result in networks that are just non-functional. And if two networks are dependent on central nodes that both get recombined out of the network, then it's a big problem. I'm not saying that's what's happening with mine. Like I said, I'm still doing more research. However, it is a very interesting potential factor. But on the other hand, they Here's my initial thought before I considered that it could be competing conventions. I'll be honest, this was my first time attempting to implement the NEAT algorithm on my own. And while it did work, it definitely needs some tweaking. Even with 200, it is at 60 plus generations and not looking any better than it was on the first generation. I really don't have the foggiest idea why, but if I had to guess, and that's exactly what this is, it's, it's just a guess, I would say that the initial random inputs that is generated for the neural network they're not close enough to be able to increase or, or mutate or cross over in order to create an AI in the next generation that actually works, which that obviously means that the whole entire neural network, the AI itself is flawed because it should be able to mutate to a point, especially after 60 generations with a population of 200, that it could get at least past the second hit and of course ideally beating the game altogether. I say this because when I increase the population from 200 all the way up to a thousand it works within the first two to three generations but most of the time it actually works on the very first generation and that's why I'm led to believe that's not training itself properly. I mean if those random initial inputs if, if they're way off a proper neural network should be able to train those especially within 60 plus generations to a point where it does better than hitting it one maybe two times however now that i say that out loud it it's also almost a binary thing because either the paddle hits it or it doesn't i don't have anything speeding up i don't have the paddle going half size which if you didn't realize by now that's kind of why because i was struggling with the ai itself i didn't want to throw in any other variables and just to top it all off i actually could have just done this little bit of code here and gotten a much better result but that's cheating that's not an actual ai that's like a better version of the if statement ai it's hacking it's it's more so a hack rather than an ai if that makes sense this is actually the best score i got up to but i forgot to record it in all honesty it's just a ball bouncing around a screen i don't know why i thought this video would be interesting you may have played this game as a kid but you may not have known what this game was actually based around the original arcade game actually had artwork on the side of it, and it was about prison escape. According to the release of this game, the player is actually a prison inmate attempting to knock a ball and chain into the wall of the prison cell with a mallet. And if you want to avoid having this happen to you, figuratively speaking, but with a keyboard and someone coming after your online data, I would recommend using NordVPN. I've partnered up with them for this video to give you 70% off plus one free month when using promo code Forest Knight. And that's for you and your entire family. You can have up to six simultaneous connections to super fast servers. I believe they have over 5,500 across 60 countries. And that's very important because with NordVPN, if you go on Netflix, now you may not know about this, on Netflix, there are shows that are only available in certain countries. Some are only available over in Europe, some over in the US, some over in country, different countries around the world. So if you use NordVPN and you are basically telling Netflix, hey, I'm in Europe rather than United States, you're unlocking more shows on Netflix. And that's just one of the very brilliant use cases that NordVPN has. Of course, it always protects your data, especially if you like to work in airports. Well, maybe you don't go to airports nowadays, but coffee shops, anywhere in the public where you use your computer, connect online, you need to be using NordVPN, otherwise you're really putting yourself at risk. I'll leave a link down in the top of the description below, and remember, promo code FARSNIGHT to get 70% off as well as one month free. And if I could ask another favor of you, please be sure to subscribe to this channel because if you like this video, you made it to the end, you're really gonna like what I have in store next. And if you could, share this video with your friends. I'd really appreciate it. Until then.